Welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health, everyone. I'm Michelle Crosmer, renal dietitian here with Dr. Sean Hoshmi, nephrologist. And we have a really important topic to talk about today. We talk a lot about food and kidney, you know, biology and medications. And um, today we're talking about stress and kidney disease and the impact that stress can have on the kidneys. And this is something that's so important because it's probably something maybe put on the back burner a lot of the times, but it plays a big role. It's so important for kidney health and just overall health. So we want to talk about it. Um, So Dr. Hashmi, what impact does stress have on the kidneys? You know, this is such a fascinating question because stress is such a big deal in every single disease out there. And yet, I don't know of any studies that have really come up with a comprehensive model to assess the impact of stress on kidney health. Now, there's also um, mechanisms and secondary pathways, so I'll talk a little bit about that. But in terms of like a really well-designed, no, I don't know of any that exist. And if our audience does, please share it with us because that would be awesome because I'm always looking for data to be able to show. But the idea behind this is, is, There are psychological factors that affect you. There are social environment stuff. Some people are genetically exposed to the idea that stress affects them more. But what ends up happening is is essentially you end up having this concept where stress will lead to all sorts of physical things. So for example, there's some data that shows that the more stress you're under, the more likely do you have to have salt and water retention because your aldosterone production in your body goes up. It's a fascinating concept. Just by stress, you're causing yourself to have more salt retention, more water, which translates into higher blood pressure. We also know that inflammatory cytokines will go up simply because you're stressed. Why should you care? Because that causes narrowing of your blood vessels inside all your arteries and veins and especially inside kidneys and everywhere else in the body. So that happens. Then you talk about things like the endothelial lining where some of those molecules start to go up that lead to buildup of plaque means narrowing and you're narrowing the blood supply over to the kidney. And so this becomes interesting because when you start to look at rat models or animal models, what you find is, is that as you put them under stress, whether it's physical stress in their locked environments, their blood pressure goes up, their heart rate goes up, and this whole concept of the elasticity of their blood vessels goes down. So what we call vascular reactivity tends to go down. And so there's this imbalance that starts to get created between your sympathetic or your fight or flight reaction that happens. And as a result of it, all these bad things are happening. Mm -hmm. So even though I may not have a direct link, what the studies consistently show is stress is linked to chronic kidney disease, likely indirectly through diabetes, insulin resistance, obesity, metabolic syndrome, and just in general, overall inflammation. So we know it's important, right? So how does someone know if they're chronic? I mean, probably chronically stressed is what we want to talk more about, but how does someone even know if they're having the stress is impacting their body? Is there any blood work or any signs or symptoms that they can look for? You know, this is, this is always interesting because Everybody wants to know, and we don't have a standardized way. In other words, it's not like we're going to measure everybody's inflammatory markers because that's nonspecific. And it's not like we're going to start to measure everybody's blood cortisol levels Mm -hmm. to see, you know, these are the cortisol levels that are corresponding to your hypothalamic, pituitary, adrenal axis being in overdrive. So it's a little bit tricky in that I don't have a clear answer in terms of a specific blood test, but I can tell you if you're under stress, it's going to affect your relationships, your sleep, your eating, and your ability to be able to control or exercise sort of that willpower concept more and more. And most people who are under stress, and and by the way, are type A people, we're so proud to be type A, but there's no such thing as type A personality. It's this concept that those folks are under a tremendous amount of stress. They just don't know it. Now, you can handle stress better. 
A lot of people in very difficult jobs can learn to handle stress better. And that's a tool we can also work on to become better, but really no real good blood test. So that being the case, I, I thought it would be kind of cool, Michelle, if we said, you know, what would you say are your top tips that you tell people about relieving, managing stress? Um, well, first of all, well, first of all, I want to say, of course, like I'm not perfect in this, and this is something that I have to work out with stress with, you know, work and just family stuff. So, um, I would say we're all in this together as far as, you know, working to relieve or manage stress. But I think first of all, it's, can you pinpoint what the stressor is, or maybe a couple things that are underlying that might be causing you that stress? Because if you don't know what it is that's causing you stress, then it's hard to work on improving that. Um, second thing I would say is deep breathing. And I'm not even talking about meditation. I feel like meditating, like you tell someone, oh, you should meditate. They're like, nope, it takes so much time. I don't know how to do it. It doesn't work. Like there's always an excuse to not meditate. Um, but I think just practicing deep breathing, because you could do that when you're trying to fall asleep and it can help you fall asleep. You could do that in like an acute stressful situation where you feel your blood pressure going up, you feel your heart rate going up. Um, and so breathing in for about four seconds, hold for four to seven seconds, let it out. And you do that even a couple of times or for a couple of minutes. And that can help bring your heart rate down, help bring blood pressure down, help calm yeah. you no matter what situation you're in. And I use that sometimes with sleep. I get, I'm thinking about a million things, um, of course, in the middle of the night. And I use that to help fall back asleep. And so I can't stress uh, enough that that is a really good um, technique is having those breathing exercises. The other thing is, um, you know, of course there's like, ex you know, there's exercise and other things, but I think it's really important to set boundaries in your life um, set, you don't need to be a yes, you know, person, if there's something that you is not, you know, either benefiting you or something that you enjoy doing or, um, uh, people you enjoy doing things with say no. I mean, if it's stressing you out, committing yourself and over committing yourself to things, learn and practice saying no, or taking saying, Hey, you know, let me think about it and I'll get back to you. So at least you're not having to like commit to things, um, in situations. And then, Outside of that, my last tip would be to um, do, you know, do things that you love, but things like a hobby or playing music, listening to music, you know, whether it's getting outside or, you know, something that you actually like and enjoy doing, not something that you feel like you have to do because you think, oh, this is something that I'm told will relieve my stress. You really have to think about what it is that you enjoy doing. Cause like for me, I don't play any instruments. If you asked, told me to go like play, you know, guitar, or violin, I, that would stress me out. But, um, it's something that you enjoy doing that actually calms you down, then find time in your day to fit that in because that can help, um, relieve stress. What about you, Dr. Hashmi? What tips do you have? You know, uh, I'll tell you, when we look at the longest living people on the planet, if you do what they do, you'll have a very happy, rich, successful life. And rich, I don't mean monetary rich, I mean rich in your heart and your mind and in your relationships. But, you know, that's where the concept of self principle comes in. So the data shows that if you sleep on average seven hours to nine hours a night for adults, you're going to find your overall stress goes down. You got to sleep at the same time. You got to wake up at the same time every day, seven days a week. Don't keep changing your sleep schedule. Easier said than done. I understand. But sleep is your secret weapon to stress. Exercise. Exercise builds resilience. And what it ends up doing is, is even though the acute bout of exercise raises inflammation, the long-term benefits are lower inflammation better blood flow that helps you to be able to deal with stress. This is why when you're stressed, go for a walk. It's one of the best things you can do. Don't react. Take a step back. The L is for love in self. And love is a very simple concept. We are so busy. I got to work. I got to do this. But if you spend time with your loved ones, you know, today, it just so happens that Michelle and I were recording on Valentine's Day. And, you know, after we get done recording this evening, I'm going to spend time with my wife, my kids. And what's really important for me is no matter how busy I am to stop and say the greatest thing in my life is not 
the fact that I'm a doctor, I've been able to accomplish these things. The greatest thing is, is I have these two amazing daughters that look at me like I'm some superhero and I'm nowhere near it. But if I spend five minutes with them, it's magical. So love is the act of expressing kindness and gratitude. The fascinating part is, is if you go help somebody, it is the most selfish thing you can do. Once again, if you help somebody, it is the most selfish thing you can do because the reward that you get out of it is literally tenfold higher. I'm not talking about religion or anything. I'm talking about the fact that when you do something kind, it makes you relaxed. It makes your endorphins go up, the feel-good hormones, your blood pressure goes down, and you feel good. So go out and do something kind. And if somebody asks you, why do you do it? Tell them your doctor said because you're trying to be selfish. How cool is that? <laughs> and then as you've heard me and Michelle say it over and over again, the F <clears throat> or food it's a predominantly plant-based diet. The reason we don't get into this 100% thing is because we know that it's hard. Life is hard. If you're 100%, more power to you. <coughs> if you're 90%, great. You have done 90% more than where you were. We want to meet you where you're at. So don't forget self, sleep, exercise, love, and food, and it'll be better. Not perfect, just better. Yeah. So of course we don't have the perfect, you know, answer on what everyone should do, um, for stress relief, but I think hopefully those give you some ideas and it might be different for everyone, what works for you. Um, but if you guys want to share in the comments, anything that you find helps relieve stress, I think people in the kidney disease community learning from each other and not just us is also super helpful. So stress and kidney disease, you guys, we'll see you next time. And happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Thanks, guys.